Now, just a little warning before we begin that there will be major spoilers in this video for the eighth episode of The Bad Batch, or the episode titled Reunion. So if you have not seen it yet, and you don't want anything ruined, it is a really good time to click away. Okay, so first of all here, in my opinion, this was one of the best, if not the best episode yet, or maybe the best episode since the first episode. It perfectly blended together everything I've been enjoying about the show. It had the right kind and perfect amount of humor. It had great action and tension, good character moments, and gave us more of the Imperial and Kaminoan side of things, which I was really missing the past few episodes, while also having a pretty amazing surprise cameo that scored it quite a few points. Which is what I think we'll talk more about first, the surprise return of Cad Bane. And this is a surprise in more ways than one because, well, first of all, he's one of my favorite characters and it's just cool to see him back. And as soon as I heard that iconic voice, I literally said aloud, oh crap, only I didn't say crap. However here, this is also a surprise because, as you may know or have seen, Cad Bane was actually or originally going to be killed by Boba Fett in one of the unfinished or roughly animated episodes of Clone Wars that we got to see a part of. It was an episode in one of the later seasons that we were going to get until the show got cancelled when Disney purchased Lucasfilm. It was also in this duel between them that we see how Boba Fett got that dent in his helmet. And that's because they both basically shot each other at the same time, and Fett's Beskar armor apparently saves him. Anyway, that original duel between Bane and Boba Fett looked a lot like this one between Bane and Hunter, so much so that I wonder if that's intentional, if this is supposed to be like a callback or homage to that, or perhaps this is even going to be a sort of setup for us still getting the duel between Cad Bane and Boba Fett at some point, maybe in this show, or who knows, maybe even in the Book of Boba Fett. Maybe this was their way of establishing, or re-establishing, I should probably say, just how amazing of a bounty hunter Cad Bane is. He's probably the best one in the galaxy at this time, and we've seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jedi before. And as I've theorized elsewhere, I don't think it'd be impossible to see some of those unfinished Clone Wars arcs make a type of comeback here, or to be finished in this show. I mean, there's nothing to say changes couldn't be made to the bounty hunter arc from Clone Wars, where again, Bane and Fett duel but alterations are made so that it takes place after the end of the Clone Wars and somehow now includes the Bad Batch. Though that said, if you want to leave Cad Bane alive for a while yet, and I'm certainly fine with that, I think he would make for a heck of a rival for Boba Fett in the book of Boba Fett. And one way or another, I think we'll get more of him sooner rather than later. He's just not only one of my favorite characters, but I know many out there really do love the character of Cad Bane. And speaking of bounty hunters and all that, it seems we have it confirmed who hired Fennec Shan to hunt down Omega, that it was the Kaminoans, which I don't think is really a surprise at all. I don't think it made too much sense for anyone else to be after Omega, or to introduce maybe a sort of third party here, along with the Imperials and the Kaminoans that we have right now. I know some people thought that maybe Palpatine himself might be personally hunting her and hiring bounty hunters, assuming she was maybe a clone of his. But I don't think that makes too much sense, mainly because the Imperials don't seem to have too much interest in finding the Bad Batch, much less Omega. It feels more like Crosshair who wants to bring them in for being treasonous. And he certainly doesn't have any orders to bring Omega in alive, which I think he would if Palpatine actually wanted her, if she was important to him. I'd have to imagine that an order would subtly come down the line that this child is not to be killed. And while we're on the topic of Omega, I loved that opening with her and Wrecker, how he was teaching her how to disable or disarm an explosive, and he makes it seem like it's going to explode if she can't figure it out on the fly, or after he just showed her how to do it. But it turns out to just be a smoke bomb. That just feels like the type of prank a crazy uncle would play on a nephew or something. And yet, at the same time, in the back of your mind, you wonder if that's something Wrecker would be crazy enough to do, to test her with a real explosive. It's also interesting to note that she didn't succeed in disarming it, which is more evidence against the theory that she just picks up or learns stuff after seeing it done once. Though maybe she was just so scared and nervous that she failed because of that, because she was terrified and second-guessing herself. And I half expected her learning how to disarm a bomb to come into play later in the episode, but surprise, surprise, it didn't. 
I was also glad once Hunter was down after being shot by Cad Bane that she didn't somehow get away from or thwart Cad Bane. I mean, I like Omega, she's adorable, and I think they're doing a really, really good job of building this child character in a way that doesn't alienate adult fans, which has been a problem in the past with other younger characters in Star Wars shows. But if she had somehow got the best of Cad Bane when he essentially had her dead to rights, I just don't know about that one. Like I said, I like Omega. I understand she's in there for the younger viewer to kind of connect with. But this is Cad Bane we're talking about. Again, he's a guy that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jedi, and he just bested Hunter. So I see no way Omega is getting out of that one on her own. Though now that I've said that, I have little doubt that when she does eventually escape or is rescued, she'll somehow get the best of Cad Bane. Though honestly, I think... Cad Bane is just going to take her back to the Kaminoans, and that'll basically be all we get from him for now. I don't think they'll rescue her from Bane. I think the Bad Batch essentially has to go home. They have to go back to Kamino and rescue her from there, probably towards the end of the season. And I say that because it may take them a while to figure out where she's even been taken. Keep in mind, they have no idea the Kaminoans want her back so badly. Hunter even asks Cad Bane, who he's working for, and he, of course, does not answer. Nor do we know exactly why the Kaminoans want her back, other than she seems very vital to their future operations or the future of the clone army they want to keep selling to the Empire. Moving on here, it was great to see Crosshair again to get another episode with him in it. I love how he knew every move his brothers were going to make, and you can really sort of understand why they are missing his tactical brilliance. Though he did get himself burned pretty bad in the end, it seems, and I wonder how that will affect the story down the road. Is this something he'll sort of hold against them now, beyond just being traitors in his eyes currently, thanks to the chip? Like, even after the chip is eventually removed, will he remember this moment and be angry about it? Or could having his face almost melted off even have affected the chip right now? Only time will tell, but I'd have to imagine this whole having his face burn thing will play into something somewhere down the road. And speaking of being controlled by the chips and all of that, it was once again tragic and so very sad to see what has become of the regular clone troopers. It is kind of heartbreaking after you go through all those seasons of the Clone Wars to see them build up and become their own person, only to be brought back down and turned into essentially mindless, almost soulless soldiers. They feel a little different from the droids they used to fight. And I'm still oh so curious, though a little frightened, to see what happens to them long term just what happens to the clones after the stormtroopers really start to take over. Another thing I really liked or appreciated was Echo bringing up Rex and asking if maybe they should be with him or working with him now. It was a nice, subtle little reminder that Echo is not like the other members of the Bad Batch, that he was, and in some ways still is, I guess, a regular clone, though yes, an exceptional regular clone, since he did become an ARC trooper. But it was nice to see Echo still has that sort of pull to want to serve, to fight and save what's left of the Republic. That, because he was either programmed or really started to care, or a combination of both, that he feels perhaps bad about the fall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. While on the other side of things, the Bad Batch never really probably had that type of loyalty to the Republic itself. They were always a unit onto themselves and fought for the Republic, probably more because they just enjoyed fighting. Anyway, I thought it was a nice little touch or moment or reminder that Echo really comes from a different place and he believes in something different than the rest of the team. Going along with this, I saw a lot of people sort of upset that we didn't see like any interaction between Rex and Echo in the previous episode, which, yes, was disappointing. Though do keep in mind, they have seen each other fairly recently before that. Rex was not only with the Bad Batch when they rescued Echo in Season 7 of Clone Wars, but he was there with them on the base afterwards where we saw Echo had joined the Bad Batch. So it's not like they hadn't seen each other in forever, that it was the first time they'd seen each other since Echo was thought to be dead. But it was still, again, a little disappointing not to see these two interact. Anyway, to start to wrap this up, I again thought this episode hit on all the right notes. I think it's my favorite since the premiere, which isn't to say I haven't enjoyed all the others along the way. This one just got everything right. I was a little surprised to see Omega captured in the end, and with us being only halfway through the season with eight episodes down and eight episodes to go, and I wonder when exactly will they rescue her? 
will it be in the next episode or two or will the rest of the first season be in large part about them hunting down omega and then rescuing her i mean i do think they've certainly built up enough of a bond between them between the bad batch and omega i certainly believe they drop everything to try and save her and it would probably be good tension for the rest of the season i suppose but I honestly thought her being captured would happen much later in the season, that we'd have more time with them together first, that it would happen in maybe one of the final two or three episodes and build to the climactic season finale. Either way here though, great episode, and I'm very much looking forward to the next one and seeing how they do eventually rescue Omega, and hopefully why the Kaminoans want her back so badly. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you thought of this episode. Do you agree it was the best one yet? Or am I crazy? Was it maybe only okay or average? Or maybe you didn't like it at all? Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.